Hi there, crazies. We start this anime by seeing Misaki Ayuzawa, who doesn't let the scoundrels of the school get away with anything because she is the student council president and wants the school to be a perfect place. So she asked the vice president to write a guide on how to behave as the school used to be for boys only and when girls arrived, they were very submissive due to fear. Misaki started training and studying to change things and stop being intimidated by men. Misaki runs to help a girl whom she heard crying, but it turns out it was just a broken heart because her classmate Yusui Takumi rejected her. She warns Yusui to not be so cold with women and leave. Our MC is quite humble, so her house is falling apart as she lives only with her mother who is sick. Therefore, the MC has a part-time job, and just as her little sister tells her that she was called to work, she rushes off. It turns out that she works in a maid cafe and is quite popular there, but she still doesn't get used to it and only does it because they pay her generously. However, if anyone saw her there, it would be her downfall as her reputation would be ruined. To her misfortune, Yusi passes by the cafe and recognizes her, and the MC breaks down, thinking it's the end. She finishes her shift, and Yusui continues to wait for her to confirm that it's her. Misaki grabs him and explains to him her whole family situation. Yusi sympathizes with her. Misaki has no intention of letting all her hard work go to waste because of this, but at school, she's paranoid about anyone who says or implies anything related to maids. Her friend Sakura Hanazono asks for her help, and as always, she takes control by force, making the guys to listen to her. But this time, Yusi sees her and leaves after laughing. Then Sakura explains that Yusui is the most popular boy in school, and no matter how many times he rejects them, the girls keep trying. In the afternoon, Yusui goes to the MC's workplace, and she's annoyed. But work comes first, and she has to serve him politely, which makes Yusui amused as he stares at her. Misaki thinks he's just teasing her, but Yusui is truly interested in her past. As the days go by, Yusui finds himself going to the cafe every day. But when the MC sees that he got first place on the exam, she gets annoyed because she thinks he did it just to annoy her. She goes to find him in his classroom, but there she sees that the boys are reading manga, which she confiscates. The boys complain because she only seizes their magazines. Her answer is to check all the magazines that the students bring in and confirm if they are appropriate or not. This is a huge job, so she ends up being very busy. Yusui tells her she should take things more calmly as she seems tired. Misaki tries to say he's talking nonsense, but she almost faints, so Yusui worries. Logically, she enters Sundir mode, all because she doesn't want to receive his help and storms off to work. However, for her bad luck, the school scoundrels see her and they want to get revenge. Luckily, Yusui defends her and the rebels run away while Yusui takes care of her. Due to the MC being able to rest, the next day she sings renewed and thanks Yusui for saving her. He gives her the good news that the scoundrels won't say anything about what they saw. Misaki wants to repay the favor he did for her. Her, but she's embarrassed because Yusu wants her to be his maid for a day. The next day, the MC locked up a student for playing a prank on the girls. As he did not want to stop, he was forcibly detained. They asked Yusi to convince her to release him, but he refused. However, he ends up releasing him with his own hands as they wanted to impose on her. Later, we see that the school festival is about to begin, and the MC wants to have a more feminine festival to clean up the reputation of her school. She rejects the proposals of some classmates because they are inadequate in her opinion, and they have to resort to Yusu for help. Misaki cannot say no to him, but she ends up not accepting his help. In the afternoon, she goes to the cafe as usual, where she tries to kick Yusui out because her her secret is in danger if anyone sees him. But he tells her not to worry because even the scoundrels became his fans after seeing her dress as a maid. Misaki arrives at home and notices that her sister won a contest, but the prize is food, so she recommends that she enter contests where she can win things she likes. However, she only follows the MC's example as she also works in something she doesn't like. The next day, the MC continues to reject the boys' ideas, so she asks the girls what they want and, oh no, they decide to make a cafe. When the preparations begin, only the girls are working, which makes the MC provide some advice. She says that her sister works in a cafe in order to conceal her supposedly lack of experience. Later, she goes to see a haunted house where she had banned the men from dressing up as they had a tendency to harass women with that excuse. They say they will not do anything like that anymore, but one of them tries to grope the MC, so she ends up kicking them all out. Later, Sakura scares the MC, and she wonders if it's okay for the men to seemingly be doing nothing. Misaki is not too worried as she thinks they must surely be planning something strange as usual. At work, one of her coworkers seems annoyed because she knows the MC doesn't like her job. Her boss calms things down as she appreciates how hard the MC works, although she also believes that to serve well, you must have fun. Misaki seems a little annoyed, and to top it off, Yusui appears and plays some heavy jokes on her. She gets so angry, she even seems to hate men. Yusui warns her that she should listen to them even once, as she may regret it someday. Misaki does not take it too seriously, and the school festival begins. The men in Yusui's class have gathered to cosplay as warriors and invade the cafe, and as Yusui found it fun, he goes along with them. Misaki keeps an eye on everyone to behave well, then goes to see how the cafe is doing, and is surprised to find that the boys have taken over and are almost forcing people to come in. So she stops them and asks for an explanation. The men tell her that they did it because they want to have fun at the festival, but she never listens to them, so they ignore her and 
leave, leaving the cafe without anyone to attend it. Misaki realizes what Yusu told her and asks them to help her, but it's already too late. She starts to attend the customers herself, even though out of habit. She addresses one of them as master, so Yusu steps in to help her and catches everyone's attention. The boys see that it seems like fun, so they also join in and start to attend to the customers in a friendly manner. Misaki's mood changes, and even though they do some silly things, she only tells them to behave. Everyone starts to think that she's very kind, and the scoundrels confirm it. At night, the MC goes to rest for a while, and Yusi goes to see her. She thinks she's learned how to deal with men and believes she could even publicly confess what her job is, but then changes her mind since she is his private maid. The next day, the MC wants an example of how to act around men, so she observes her little sister, but she is not a great reference. Then she goes to work, and they organize an event where the maids will dress up as little sisters, forcing the MC to practice her dialogue. Misaki looks very cute in her little sister's outfit and hairstyle, but when she speaks, she lacks charm and sounds very bad. Sonoko gets upset with her because she doesn't see any real interest. Misaki leaves feeling kind of depressed, but her boss goes to cheer her up and inform her of the upcoming events so she can start deciding what to wear. Yusti sees them and becomes curious about what color would look good on the MC, so he goes to the scoundrels for their opinion. They were even admiring a drawing of her. The guys give him several colors and their reasons, but Yusui is not convinced. Meanwhile, the MC overhears the student council members looking at confiscated magazines, but her mind is on another topic. What she really cares about is how to be a good little sister, so she asks Yukimura. However, he is so scared that he can't answer her. She starts investigating in the magazines, but Yusui catches her in the act. She gets nervous and acts like nothing is happening. Misaki asks her friends since they are also little sisters, and after hearing their stories, she thinks they are very cute. They blush because the MC was very sweet. She keeps working hard to investigate how to be a better little sister, and that impresses her co-workers. Still, Sonoko doesn't like her, although she thinks it's very nice that she helps with difficult customers. Yuzi wonders why it's so hard for her, considering that she also has a little sister. He tells her that if she doesn't think she can do it, it would be best to change shifts. However, the MC is affected by Sonoko's words, so she doesn't want to give up because she recognizes that the maid cafe creates a very relaxing environment, and she wants to offer that feeling. Yuzi tells her that she should act naturally if that's what she desires, but the MC MC doesn't believe he's serious. So on the day of the event, she dresses up as the cute little sister and talks with prefabricated phrases. The girls are surprised because she looks natural, but Yusui arrives and he seems uncomfortable because he doesn't like her change in attitude. He makes mean jokes and orders food that is not on the menu, taking advantage of the fact that she can't say no. So the MC explodes and yells at him in front of everyone. Yusui wants to leave because the MC is in a bad mood, but she releases her son to your side and it comes out so naturally that it captivates everyone. Her coworkers are surprised because they didn't think they would see her in that way, but the only only explanation is Yusui. The next day, as usual, the girls confess to Yusui. Meanwhile, he sees that the MC saved a student and wants to see her, so he tells the girl that he is an otaku and that all he likes are maids, leaving her surprised. No matter how much she tries to accept him as he is, Yusui rejects her. He corners the MC and asks her to take off her clothes so she gets angry, but in reality, he wanted to see how her arm was since the hit seemed too harsh. She tries to downplay it, but he takes care of her, and her boss becomes alarmed when she sees her bandaged up at work. Misaki goes to work and tries to ignore Yusui, but he stays chatting with the boss for a while giving her instructions on how to help her employee so she doesn't burn out. The boss believes that the MC is a burden to Yusui because she worries too much, but in reality, Yusui finds it amusing to see her work so hard. He recommends white for her next event so she can add some color, making the MC nervous. The next day, the boss tells the MC that she has an older brother. Just then, a famous idol named Oe arrives. She's the boss's niece, and they take her to the changing room. Oe wants to work in the maid cafe, but as she's still in junior high school, she can't. It turns out she had a fight with her dad and had to run away from home so she will be staying at the boss's house. Oi insists on working at the cafe, so she tries on the maid outfit. However, the MC has to stop her from giving the wrong impression of the place, and Oi starts to hate her for being too serious. Yusui arrives, and for Aoi, it was love at first sight. She wants someone as handsome as him to be at her feet. She is relieved to hear that he is not yet the MC's boyfriend. Just then, the boss reveals that they don't have any cooks, so Yusui offers to help. They give him a small cooking test, and he shows that he's a culinary genius, so they accept him. Aoi tries to get Yusui to cook for her, but he only serves customers, so she gets upset that she can't can't have him at her beck and call. Misaki warns her that Yusui is tough to deal with. The next day, Oe goes to the cafe to be adored by her fans. Yusui refuses to eat with her, so Oe has to eat alone, and everyone stares at her. Meanwhile, the MC is doing physical work, so Oe asks her how she made Yusui fall for her. Misaki says she didn't do anything, which makes Aoi angry since she thinks the MC is not feminine, and yet Yusui still prefers her. When Yusui enters the cafe's storeroom, Oe tries to stop him because she wants him to herself. However, Yusui gets aggressive and asks her if she knows what that means. He throws her to the ground, and the MC 
Misaki sees this scene and punches him. Misaki also slaps Aoi because she doesn't need to go so far for people to accept her. However, Aoi reveals that when she was a child, boys used to make fun of her. That's why she tries to get everyone to be interested in her so that they will regret it. Misaki tells her that it's not necessary. Then we find out that Aoi is a tomboy and Yusui had noticed this, so he didn't pay her any attention. However, he wanted to give her the same lesson as the MC. Aoi is embarrassed, but she decides to keep trying to make them fall for her, so she runs off seemingly without giving up. The next day, she comes to the cafe dressed in men's clothing. She sees that the MC is still wearing unfeminine clothes, so she takes her to the supermarket to not waste her potential. They walk around the streets looking at dresses, but the MC is not interested. She starts collecting discount coupons to take a break and eat. Aoi confesses that she doesn't like being at home because her tastes are not accepted, but the MC likes her, even though Oe hates her. So Oe thinks the MC is a masochist. It starts raining, and they have to wait. Misaki sees a robbery and intervenes. Oe is scared that she'll get hurt, but the MC tells her that that's just how she is. Nevertheless, she gets Aoi to wear feminine clothing and forces her to wear it to work. Misaki is embarrassed, and Yusui teases her by telling her how good she looks. The next day, we see that there is a lot of paperwork due to the end of the festival, so the MC has to take care of everything. However, she overhears that the rest of the student council is still up to no good, so she becomes angry with them. At the maid cafe, Yusui sneaks into the employee's room again, but the boss interrupts them because lately, they have been harassed the girls who work at the maid cafe. She recommends that they use personal defense devices. Misaki does not believe that she needs them because she is strong and has never been harassed, although Yusi seems to be worried about her. The next day, Yusu consults with the scoundrels about the harassment, but they also do not believe that anyone is capable of harming the MC. On the other hand, she was working on accumulated work, so she leaves school late and meets Sakura, who would stay to do her homework. Misaki tells her that it is dangerous to leave so late, so she accompanies her to the station. But Yusui tells her the same thing, that she should not be alone so late. She goes to work and starts watching the customers she serves. It is time to lock up, but the boss has gone out, so they have to wait for her. Then the MC tells her colleagues that she will take care of everything, but when she is checking that there is no one left in the cafe, a man tries to subdue her. She manages to free herself and realizes that it is Yusui who had entered through the back door that she left open. He scolds her because she is too confident in her strength, but despite everything, she is still a woman, so she should be careful. Misaki is annoyed that he says these things and kicks him out of the cafe. Yusui realizes that there were some suspicious people hanging around the cafe. The next day, Yusui continues to watch over the MC as she goes to work as usual, although a couple of customers have their eye on her as they believe she is the perfect maid. At night, the boss goes out again, so the MC has to stay late once again. But she hears a noise and when she goes to see, it's these two customers who have a taser, so they manage to handcuff her. Yusui was around and upon hearing other men in the cafe, he enters with a little difficulty and tries to intervene and save the MC. Suddenly, she frees herself and beats up the Yusui laughs at the scene, but now they have a problem because he broke the glass in his attempt to help the MC. It turns out that the wanted the MC to mistreat them since they are masochistic and thought that she was sadistic, so Yusui tells them not to get their hopes up as she is his personal maid. The police take away the her and the boss is relieved that the MC is okay, but she is also surprised to see the broken window. The next day, it is the topic of conversation among the maids, and Aoi still has a photo of the MC in feminine clothing, so everyone asks her to share it, leaving the MC embarrassed. The next day, five siblings approach the MC to ask her to be their student, and she accepted, so they followed her closely all day long to observe her. They were amazed to see how good she was at everything, and they hold her up as an example to follow. At first, the MC didn't seem too uncomfortable, but then her followers assumed that she had a job and began to follow her. Misaki told them no, and the scoundrels helped her convince them. But when they saw her going to work, they chased her, and she had to run until Yusui saved her. They went together to her workplace, and since Yusui had earned enough points at the cafe, he challenged the MC to take a photo with him. She didn't seem very happy about it, so it wasn't her best photo, but for Yusui, it was enough just to have a photo of her. The next day, her followers observed her all day long, and she told them not to waste their time and study while they watched her. When she was about to go to work, they asked her again to show them where she worked, so the MC fooled and Yusui had to hide her again. The situation continued for the whole week. Yusui told her that she she should reveal her secret because it wasn't healthy to be running away all the time, but the MC refused because she wanted to continue to be an example for them. However, it was clear that she was tired and at work she seemed to be doing things half-heartedly. The scoundrels had also earned enough points to challenge the MC, and they were quite confident since they had trained hard, but she defeated them all, except for Yusui. Misaki thought about Yusui, wondering what he did with her photo and also about what he said the last time they spoke. When she went to see her classmates, they were trying on bunny ears, and they tried to teach her how to be cute, but as always, Sonoko got annoyed with her because she seemed to lack enthusiasm. This aspect of her life was the one that the MC wanted to hide from her students. Back at home, her sister noticed that something was bothering her, but she was more concerned with taking advantage of discounts and gave her cards to earn points at stores. Misaki felt relieved since her sister always did things her way. The next day, her students asked her to teach them Aikido, a martial art, and then she went up to the rooftop where Yusui was. She told him that she planned to tell her students that she was a maid so that they would find out from her and not by chance, but Yusui thought that she was doing it more for herself than for her students, although he didn't care since he already had her photo. 
photo. Misaki became alarmed when she realized that the photo shouldn't be displayed so casually, but while she tried to take it away, the photo fell where her students were. She thought that everything was lost, but Yusui asked her if she wanted him to jump to catch it first. Misaki didn't want him to do it because she believed that he didn't have a reason to do such a crazy thing, but Yusui confessed that he liked her and jumped from the rooftop to catch the photo. Misaki ran to see how he was, and he seemed fine, but her students wondered why he had to jump from the rooftop. Misaki tried to tell them what her job was, but Yusi stopped her because he wanted her to keep the secret, and he told them that she belonged to him after school, although they ended up believing that he was her bodyguard. Days later, the MC is distracted due to the kiss Yusi gave her and makes several mistakes in her work. The boss tells her not to worry since she trusts her, but Yusi appears, and the MC pushes him away as she can't stand being close to him due to embarrassment. Misaki receives a call from Sakura, informing her that some students were fighting with a school of rich kids, and they seem to have hit them for no reason. However, they don't want to apologize, even though the MC tries to make them. So they give them an ultimatum to apologize, or they will ruin their school's reputation. Misaki calms Sakura, saying that she will take care of it, but she doesn't know what to do since they won't apologize. Yusui arrives and the MC blushes as she can't be near him, so Yusui kisses Yukimura to make the MC believe he kisses anyone. Later, the MC takes the two students to apologize, but they first tell her that he called them insects when they were playing chess, and that's why they got upset. When they arrive, the MC demands that they be the ones who apologize, since those words would offend anyone. The rich academy student refuses, so they decide to settle it with a chess game. Since Yusui is the only one who knows how to play, he takes charge. The rich student thinks it will be easy, since he is ranked fourth nationally in chess, but Yusui tells him that if he wins, he has to apologize to the MC, which annoys the rich kid, but he realizes he is in checkmate. Everyone is happy, but the MC is worried that there might be more students like them in that academy, and she was not wrong. The academy's president, Miyabi, named Tora Igarashi, seemed to be up to something. The next day, Tora comes to the MC's school to apologize for the student who caused problems and tells her he's in the process of being expelled because his behavior was unacceptable. Misaki thinks it is extreme, but Tora is fascinated by her kindness and strength as she deals with the students firmly, so he asks her to join Miyabi's council and transfer there. Misaki doesn't have enough money, but Tora says it wouldn't be a problem as she could get a scholarship. Misaki doesn't know how to respond, so Tora waits for her answer. However, it turns out that it was all a facade and Tora is a womanizer who was after the MC for other reasons. The next day, there is a women-only event at the cafe and the MC has to dress like a man. Her masculine attitude comes naturally to her and all the girls fall for her thinking that he must be a passive guy. She rubs it in Yusui's face, saying that if all men were like her, she wouldn't have any problems with them. When changing clothes, the MC wonders what it means passive or dominant. Yusui takes advantage of the situation to show her that she is a woman by behaving dominantly. Misaki seems to be dissatisfied with all the mind games that Yusui always comes up with. She's had enough. Meanwhile, Taro finds out that the MC is a maid and falls even more in love with her, seeing her as the perfect woman. After class, Miyabi's counsel gives the MC a bunch of gifts from Tora, insisting that she transfers and even offering a scholarship for her little sister, but the MC still can't decide. The next day, Sakura doesn't want her to leave their school, but Shizuko gets upset because it's not an opportunity that can be rejected just like that. She overhears the students cheering that she's leaving because they would have more freedom, but there are those who disagree because she worked hard for them. Yusui is also worried about the decision she will make, but the MC says that she is considering leaving just to get rid of a stalker like him. So Yukimura is confused because he's not aware of anything. At night, the MC is surprised by the food her sister prepared, thinking that more gifts were sent, but it turns out to be just tofu, so it was a false alarm. The following days, the MC and Yusui are thoughtful because they don't know what decision the MC will make, to the point that she doesn't even go to the maid cafe. Sakura looks at all the photos of Taro and gets excited because he's a superstar. But when she learns that the MC is in Miyabi, she panics because she doesn't want her to transfer, so she runs to Miyabi with Shizuka to stop her. Meanwhile, the MC realizes that Miyabi Academy has a different aura from hers, and Taro finds out that she came to see him, so he goes to meet her. But by chance, she gets soaked with a drink, and on the other hand, Shizuko gathers the students who also don't want the MC to transfer and goes to Miyabi to convince her. Back with the MC, she takes a shower and then realizes that her clothes are gone. Taro tells her that he left a change of clothes, but it's very revealing so she doesn't want to put it on. Tara tries to enter and the MC has to put it on quickly so that he doesn't see her naked. Taro shows her that he already knows her secret, so the MC is shocked, but Taro was a little disappointed because he didn't think she would fall for this first trap. He had a lot of money prepared to buy her in case it was necessary, so he starts having fun because he thinks she's in it for the money, but she clarifies that she doesn't want any of this and just wants to reject the offer. Taro gets even more excited because she's different, and the MC tries to free herself, but Taro is good at judo, so he doesn't let go. Misaki starts calling for Yusui, and he appears to save her after having defeated all the guards outside. Yusui takes her away and congratulates her for enduring so much, but 
she goes into Sunday mode and kicks him out so she can leave. She finds all of her classmates from her school waiting for her outside. Ugh, the next part is a little different, but bear with me. We move on to a story being told about a faraway place where Sakura and Yukimura work in the fields. One day, they see a giant peach in the river and take it to eat. From it emerges the MC, who has a mission to defeat the demon. She sets off to do her job, and Sakura gives her food for the journey. After a while, she comes across the scoundrels, who are animals trapped in a cage. When she frees them, they try to steal her food, so she locks them up again. Yusi then appears, as he is the owner of a circus that uses the scoundrels as attractions. But since they try to escape, he plans to eat them. Misaki doesn't plan to intervene, but she first asks if they know anything about the demon. They tell her about the last village it attacked, so she asks Yusi to release the scoundrels so they can guide her there. Yusui agrees in exchange for her food, and they head to the village. When they arrive, they find it in ruins, and the remaining people are fighting over food. The men have also let Hygiene fall by the wayside since there are no women left. Misaki gets angry because they will have too much work to do when they return, but the men have lost faith that they can defeat the demon. Misaki asks them where the demon is, and they send her to the sea, where it is supposedly on an island across the shore. She sees people attacking a turtle and saves it. The scoundrels remember the legend of the turtle that takes you to a paradise if you save it. They try to escape on it, but they almost drown and have to go in the MC's boat instead. They send the pheasant to search for land, but after several hours, it doesn't return, so they think it abandoned them. To make matters worse, the scoundrels are starving and Yusui gives them his last bit of food, but they fight over it and it ends up falling into the water. A goddess appears and tests them. After verifying that they are honest, she gives them a coupon that they can redeem for a lot of food. But it only works after a month, so the scoundrels cry because they would prefer to have the food that fell into the water returned. After this, they see the pheasant returning, but it had been captured by a pirate ship that used it to find its friends. The captain attacks them and tries to capture the MC because he was impressed with the fact that she could deflect bullets with her sword. Yusui has to help her and destroys the ship with a bazooka he had in his pocket. Yusui takes advantage of the situation to give her first aid, and the MC is grateful for his help. They arrive at the island where the demon lives, where all the women are maids. Yusui reveals himself as the demon, so the MC thinks he is bad and tricked her into going there with the other girls. But it turns out that they are there by their own will because they followed him to seek a better life. Yusui is fed up with everything and asks the MC to be his girlfriend so that it can be just the two of them. Misaki gets nervous, and in real life, she can't stand the embarrassment she feels because Yusui was telling her a dictated story while she was asleep. What a dreamy episode. After some time, Sakura sees a famous band and they agree to go on a date with her, so she tells the MC and asks her to accompany her. However, the MC has a lot of work to do in order to have a free day. He realizes that Sakura is pushing herself too hard, so he investigates her date since he finds it very strange that she would do something like this. Sakura is also surprised by her own behavior since she hasn't done something like this in a long time. This band is very famous, even his little sister and boss know about them. However, at work, the gangsters haven't approached her lately, but it turns out they are up to something. On the day of the date, Sakura is very excited and they all go to the cafe where the scoundrels are now working. They are surprised to see that they are meeting with some guys. After talking for a while, they realize that the guys are only meeting them as a publicity stunt to increase their fan base and they are not interested in any of the girls. However, in the case of the MC, it's different as she caught the attention of the vocalist named Kuga. Kuga starts to be very obvious and invites her to his next concert. Misaki tries to decline, but seeing how excited Sakura is, she hesitates. Misaki suspects that Kuga is focusing on her and she is right as he waits for her after she leaves to insist that she goes to his concert. Kuga confesses that he doesn't care about Sakura at all and only agreed to go out with her for fan service, leaving the MC surprised. Yusui appears to help the MC and since he seems like her boyfriend or at least someone who moves her, they are left alone. It turns out that Yusui was upset that she went out with other guys and he wants her to be his alone. Misaki tells him that she only did it for Sakura and that's why she's worried as she could get hurt. Meanwhile, Kuga is upset and only talks to Sakura to ask her to convince the MC to go to his concert, which she does once again. Misaki gets upset when she realizes is that he is still using her. However, Kuga continues to flirt with her, believing that she is someone who likes to play with guys. This upsets Sakura since she is speaking very poorly of the MC, and the MC threatens Kuga not to mess with any of them. After leaving, Shuzuko is upset with the MC for causing a scene in the cafe since she was stressed out the whole time, watching the drama unfold. She also scolds Sakura for always letting things like this happen because she is not very selective. Misaki calms her down and she promises to only fall in love with people who treat her the way the MC does. Misaki leaves and Yusui is waiting for her. She realizes that he treats her the way Sakura would like her boyfriend to treat her, making her nervous, so she tries to distance herself from him. The next day, Yusui sees a lady who needs help and assists her by carrying her shopping to her house. Yusui realizes she seems very vulnerable, but it turns out she is the MC's mother, so she invites him in to thank him and also asks him to fix the falling apart floor. While they are talking, the MC arrives, and the mother is happy that she is friends with someone so kind since she does not trust men due to her father abandoning them. Misaki gets nervous because it's too much information and rushes him out so he doesn't hear anything Thing more by chance. Misaki knows her mother is easy to deceive, but when it comes to him, she believes that it was all an accident, although Yusui is already satisfied because he now knows a couple of the MC's secrets, so she forbids
forbids him from entering again. The next day, Sakura asks about her relationship with Yusi, because it was too suspicious that they left her house holding hands, but she clarifies things since they are nothing. So Sakura is disappointed because she had already made up a whole story about Yusi and the MC. Anyway, she doesn't like not knowing anything about Yusui, so she plans to follow him to see what he does after classes. Misaki doesn't like the idea, but she lets them do what they want. Although she didn't count on Sakura finding the place where Yusui works by following him, so she gets extremely nervous and doesn't know what to do. Her boss realizes this, so to calm her down, she offers her the day off, but this is not good news for the scoundrels as they had saved for this day. Misaki meets Sakura and Shizuko, so they start spying on Yusui, who has already left the cafe. Sakura theorizes that Yusui is the son of a millionaire and will stroll through luxury stores, so she's surprised to see that she is right since he enters a private pool, a luxury clothing store, and a luxury restaurant. Thanks to Shizuko, they manage to gossip without having to give up their kidney, but they find it very suspicious that he is in the restaurant, so they think he is waiting for his girlfriend, although it does not seem to be the case. Nevertheless, the MC feels bad for spying on Yusui, so she leaves since she is not interested in his secrets. Sakura seems to understand her, but upon seeing Yusui, she forgets everything the MC said and follows him for the rest of the afternoon. Sakura gets exhausted since Yusui went to too many places, so she regrets following him and goes home. Misaki is about to do the same, but she runs into Yusui, who is picking up a kitten and knows all along that they were following him because of the bright costumes they were wearing. Yusui gives her his address so she doesn't have to spy on him again, but the MC doesn't seem interested, so Yusui starts playing pranks on her, telling her to accompany him home, making the MC nervous. The next day, we see that the MC is training for the school festival where prizes are awarded to the winners. In this edition, one of the prizes is a kiss from Sakura, so the boys are more motivated than ever. Misaki plans to win all the prizes so that the boys can't cause any trouble, so she participates in all the competitions. However, she gets exhausted and has to rest for a while before returning to dominate again. The boys are fed up and start planning ways to defeat the MC. Yusui overhears their plans, and then the obstacle race begins with a kiss from Sakura as the prize. All the men participate, but only the MC and one of Sakura's suitors make it to the final stretch. The suitor tries to disqualify the MC by cheating, but Yusui saves her. He tells her that she looks beautiful when she tries so hard, but this time he will win. He runs and takes the lead, but the MC is not satisfied, so she tries to win the race at all costs. However, Yusui ends up winning. Yusui doesn't care much about the prize, so he gives it to the MC, who receives her kiss on the cheek. Meanwhile, her sister sees her potential and discovers contests that reward physical activities with food. She plans to use the MC's skills, and meanwhile, scoundrels design a maid outfit for her. However, they leave it in the costume bag for the race with costumes because they are about to be caught. It turns out that this activity was approved, and Shizuko tries to convince the MC to let her participate, but she refuses because she won't change in front of so many men. Despite this being an activity for people who are not very athletic, the MC participates again. Everyone is surprised to see that Yusi and the MC are participating as they are quite slow. Misaki manages to arrive quickly to change her clothes, but she finds the maid outfit that the scoundrels had left there, which makes her nervous. It's too much of a coincidence. To make matters worse, Yukimura accidentally changes into the maid outfit and everyone makes fun of him. Misaki gets mad at the audience and tries to leave, but Yusu calms her down because she has to wear the costume and won't solve anything with that attitude. Misaki realizes that it's inevitable for people to make fun of Yukimura, but she accepts it and goes to help him. When the audience sees that the MC and Yusui are also taking this competition seriously, they feel bad for making fun of Yukimura. Anyway, the MC gets disqualified and then has to be treated by Yusui because she was very injured after participating in so many competitions. She thinks that she should fix some things because she could improve the last competition with cute costumes. Yusui is moved by her willingness to improve the school, and this makes the MC blush. Days later, we see a boy named Eritake fighting against scoundrels from his school, but as no one can stand up to him, he goes to find a legend from his middle school called the White Demon. However, they are surprised to see that he has reformed and is now the leader of the scoundrels at the MC's academy. At first, they think that it is not really him, but after observing him, there is no doubt and they become upset and kidnap Yukimura, who is talking peacefully with the scoundrels. They threaten them, saying that they will have to save him by fighting. After this, the MC goes to ask them what's going on. After getting the contacts, they go to recover Yukimura at the scoundrel school, but they don't know how to find him. Fortunately, always studies at this school and knows who Eritake is, as she used to have a pretty large gang that has since been disbanded. They decide to go to his secret base, and here Yukimura is released, as Eritake does not want to be too harsh with a woman, not realizing that Yukimura is a man. Misaki does not want the academy to be associated with a gang fight, so Elway has the wonderful idea of pretending that they are shooting a movie outside the hideout, so that they do not think that what is happening there is real. On the other hand, Eritake remembers when the scoundrels saved him from receiving a beating, which is why he trusts that he will not leave a person who has been kidnapped to their fate. Unfortunately, they encounter the MC's sister, who tries to help them with their film, but as it is not necessary, she only gives them food. Later, Eritake talks about how great the former leader of the scoundrels was, and they begin to fight as not everyone agrees with what they are doing. At that moment, the MC arrives with the scoundrels, and they feel like they have come back home due to nostalgia. Eritake tries to hit the former leader of the scoundrels, so Yusui has to stop the MC from interfering 
interfering as this is their way of communicating. After a while, the former leader of the scoundrels wins the fight, and he is surprised that Eretake has become so strong as he knew him as a crybaby. But he encourages him to maintain his dream of keeping the gang as it was before, as he trusts him. On the other hand, one of the scoundrels feels left out, so they try to cheer him up, and Eretake starts threatening the MC. So the scoundrels intervene, and she is the leader of the school, and they have a lot of fear and respect for her. The gang apologizes for being rude, and everything is resolved, although they forgot about Yukimura, who is still trapped. The next day, the MC hears some high school girls talking positively about her academy, and she feels proud that her efforts are paying off as more women may join. However, a strange boy overhears them, and the next day, the council has made several mistakes, which surprises her. Later, a song starts playing that makes the MC sleepy, so she goes to see who put it on. However, a strange boy named Canoe was waiting for her, and he hypnotizes her while she's half asleep, making everyone believe that she is drunk and ruining her reputation. Kanab doesn't want more girls to join the school. Yusi sees the MC in that state, and he takes her to the infirmary, realizing that she is drunk, although she didn't seem to have drunk anything. So he records her have evidence and ties her up so that she doesn't do anything crazy, but he realizes that Canoe was watching them and seemed nervous around women. Eventually, the effects wear off, and the MC becomes thoughtful about everything that Yusu showed her because she thinks it was a dream. However, after thinking about it for a while, it makes sense since there was a mysterious person in the radio room. Meanwhile, Yusu meets Canoe and pretends to be hypnotized to confirm that he is the culprit. However, it doesn't seem to work on him, so Canoe is surprised. Later, the MC goes to look for Canoe, and Yusi finds out and rushes to her. He knows that she is easy to hypnotize and confirms that Canoe tried to hypnotize her while they were talking. He tells her that if she sleeps within the next 24 hours, she will hate Yusui forever. Misaki doesn't get too upset because she claims that she already hates Yusui, but he still accompanies her all the time to ensure that she doesn't fall asleep. She becomes uncomfortable with how much he is following her around, even staying outside her house at night and constantly calling her to keep her awake. For the MC, staying up all night studying is nothing, so she asks Yusui to stop bothering her. However, Yusui says that he is so worried because he loves her and thinks that she feels the same way. Misaki becomes nervous and tries to deny her feelings. The next day, Yusui waits outside her house all day, so the MC avoids her family seeing him and leaves with breakfast. She warns him that if he does it again, she will call the police. At school, the MC is exhausted from staying up all night, so Yukimura recommends some supplements, but she needs to go to his classroom to get them since he forgot them. On the way, she meets Canoe, and he hypnotizes Yusui to give her painkillers, making her even sleepier. She goes outside to get some fresh air and asks Yusui to hit her to wake her up, but he doesn't want to do it because he doesn't want her to hate him. Yusui explains how to avoid being hypnotized, and the MC feels grateful to him for always helping her. But Yusui doesn't mind helping her because he wants her to fall in love with him. Misaki falls asleep in Yusui's arms, and Canoe appears since he almost succeeded in hypnotizing her, but ended up falling asleep himself. Yusui appears annoyed with Canoe, but Canoe tells him it doesn't make sense since he lost anyway, even though it was a bait since the MC couldn't fall asleep while Yusui was speaking incoherently. Now, Canoe has to think of an appropriate punishment for him. The next day, they begin preparations for an event to attract new high school students, and the MC wants to make a cafe that can serve as a break for visitors and a place where girls can relax. She then uses Canoe as her labor. Canoe tries to escape several times, but the MC doesn't let him go, and he gets scared because he shouldn't be able to be everywhere, but that's his magic. She realizes that no matter how uncomfortable Canoe is with women, he is not aggressive towards them, so she seems to have an idea of what's happening to him. Misaki puts all her effort into this event so she doesn't work and sees the outfits that the girls want to wear in the cafe, so she gets scared, but she lets them do what they want to give their best. The day of the event arrives and everything seems to be perfect, but the MC gets upset to see Yusu wandering around since he distracts the girls who pass by. She then asks him to help the sports clubs since they seem discouraged, and all the clubs ask him for help to win future members, although he doesn't seem to like this idea very much. Meanwhile, in the cafe, Sakura and the other girls want Kanu to dress up, so they force him since he will look cute. And while Yusu begins to impress all the club spectators, the MC takes the students to whom she was giving the tour to the cafe so they can rest and think about everything they saw. When they arrive, they see that they have made a maid cafe, and that's why she got scared when she saw the outfits. But she is surprised because everyone is very calm, sharing these moments, so she remembers what her boss told her about the atmosphere created in these places. Then she sees Canoe dressed as a waiter with a rabbit hat. So they go out to talk, and Canoe complains to her since they forced him to wear it, making it clear that he has a problem with women, although now he can look her in the eyes. So he feels that he has made progress by being surrounded by so many people. Back in the cafe, the MC realizes that one of the girls has trouble talking to men, so Kane remembers that his father always told him to treat them with care, and that's why he gets nervous, although he knows that wasn't the reason his mother left them. Misaki brings Kanu to show him that men are not that scary, so he feels embarrassed by the way they use him, but he realizes she is right, so he hypnotizes the girl so she is no longer afraid of men, although it was also for himself to finally overcome his trauma. Kanu is embarrassed after this, but the MC is proud of him since he was very kind to the girls, so she wishes him the best and leaves. Yusi was a little upset after working so hard, so he asks the MC for a reward. She tries to thank him, but Yusi won't settle for that this time, so 
after she pets his hair, he calms down, although to balance the atmosphere, she plays a prank on him. Summer vacation has begun, and the store has temporarily closed because the employees of the maid cafe are going to the beach. Najiza, the boss's sister, invited them to her beach house. Oi is also with them because they sent him to see if they can make him behave like a man. The boss asked Yusi to go as a bodyguard, but he doesn't like the sun, so he's wandering in the shade. Misaki forces him to work and then changes to go swimming, so Yusu watches her closely. However, she's wearing a swimsuit that looks like a school uniform, so Yusu becomes depressed and leaves. While he is leaving, it is evident that the only person who catches his attention is the MC. Meanwhile, the MC realizes that the store where they are staying is empty. They have a meeting, and it turns out that it is because of the location. So the girls decide to use their secret weapon, which is to do what they always do, be maids. Misaki does not like the idea, so she tries to get Najisa to oppose turning her restaurant into a maid cafe, but Najisa does not seem to care because they are doing it for free, so she will wait and see how it works. To no one's surprise, the store starts to have a lot of customers, and the MC has to help with something. She helps Oa clean, but she spanks him in the showers, so Oa leaves embarrassed and upset. Misaki never ceases to be surprised by the atmosphere generated by the maids. Meanwhile, Yusui has just woken up from his nap, and upon entering the room, he sees the MC changing. She becomes nervous because she was putting on the swimsuit her boss gave her in case she helps. Then Yusui sucks on her back so that everyone can see the mark he left. Misaki is embarrassed and comes out wearing a shirt. They end the day and celebrate having the best sales day of the year. They decide to go to the hot springs to celebrate, but Sonako tells an urban legend about ghosts that haunt people who go to the hot springs. Misaki is scared, but still wants to go until she realizes that, as everyone will be naked, the mark Yusui left will be visible. She tells everyone that she doesn't feel like going, so they respect her decision and leave her to take care of the place with Yusui. Misaki becomes very depressed because she wanted to go, as it was her first vacation in a long time. She gets upset with Yusui because she can't have fun because of him. But then she finds some free tickets to the hot springs, and she runs to deliver them to her boss. She won't allow them to pay for something that can be free. Yusui tries to stop her because the path is dark and he has heard the legend of the ghosts, but the MC tries to be strong and runs. She trembles, trying to deny the existence of the ghosts, but when Yusui appears, suddenly, she almost has a heart attack and she falls to the ground in panic. Yusui hugs her to calm her down, but this only makes her blush and she cuddles up to him to calm down. Oi returns from shopping and sees them hugging, so he shouts at them for doing their dirty things in the woods. Misaki tries to explain what happened, but Elway only tells her that it's very obvious that they like each other, so he doesn't care much. Misaki is left thoughtful upon hearing this. She arrives with her boss to deliver the tickets, but they were the ones they had left over, so this whole journey was for nothing. However, since they're already there, Yusu grabs Aoi and both of them go to the hot springs. The next day, the MC wakes up happy for a new day at the beach, but seeing Yusu reminds her of everything that happened the night before, so she feels embarrassed, although not for long as she overhears Aoi talking to Nagisa, who's willing to let him do whatever he wants if they win the beach volleyball competition. Confident, Oi accepts the challenge, thinking that Najisa will be his partner, but she can't participate because she exceeded the age limit, so he will have to find a partner. Misaki is surprised to see him so determined to win and offers to be his partner when she passes by accidentally. Oi accepts and he tells all the girls about it. We find out that if they win, he will be the center of attention at the celebration party, but he doesn't care and he starts practicing with the MC. Yusi goes to see her because he thinks she's too confident, but beach volleyball is very different from regular volleyball. Although the MC is a novice, she still wants to win because Oi takes it very seriously. After a few hours, they arrive at the event super motivated to crush all their opponents, but they are in for a big surprise because Yusui is also participating and has every intention of winning. This ignites Aoi's and the MC's competitiveness, and they crush all their opponents until they reach the final against Yusui. Misaki thinks he's trying to help her by letting her win, but that's not the case because Yusui crushes them in the first set. Misaki realizes that he's really trying to win the tournament, and to make matters worse, he's too good, and he has the game completely under control, so he forces Aoi and the MC to overexert themselves. But in one of the plays, the MC jumps and is about to crash into the referee's chair, so Yusui runs to her rescue and ends up getting hurt. Because of this, the MC wins the match, but she is very worried and embarrassed because she only won because Yusu couldn't continue, so she refuses the prize of being the beach princess. Najisa sees Oi's determination and respects her decisions. Yusu tells the MC that she's too careless, so she apologizes. Then Yusu takes the opportunity to play a prank on her, but he also tells her why he participated in the tournament because he didn't want the MC to go out in a swimsuit and take pictures with strangers. For the MC, this was less important than Aoi's reason, but for Yusu, there was nothing more important than her, so she gets nervous and doesn't know if she should believe him because he usually jokes about these things. Yusui approaches her to show her that it's not a joke, and they have a moment to kiss, but the fireworks cut the mood, and the MC realizes what she's doing, so she moves away and says she's blushing because she got sunburned. They return to the cabin, and Aoi ends up being the beach princess. Taking advantage of the fact that they are all together, the boss wants to take a commemorative photo, so they all gather, but in the meantime, Aoi starts hinting that they were doing dirty things, and since the MC hesitates a little, they seem to realize that they did, so Aoi becomes toxic and tries to pull the MC, but Yusui wouldn't let her go for anything in the world. 
Classes resume and Yukimura becomes friends with Kanu due to his feminine traits. After finishing all the council work, the MC meets Yusui, who she doesn't want to owe a debt to. Yusui asks her to be his maid for a day, but she declines. Yusui jokes that he might ask for something obscene and leaves as the MC has work to do. At work, they start trying their luck with fortune cookies and Miyabi, the vice president of the academy, appears. He is the heir to an important chain of restaurants, which are interested in the building they're in to open a butler cafe. Oh, I doesn't believe they know how a butler should act, but Toru shows up to refute it as he's a perfect butler. He invites them to a presentation since they will select the best staff possible. Toru leaves so they can evaluate the offer and the MC stops him, thinking he only does it because she works there. However, Toru denies it and says that he's doing it for the vice president's success. If she believes she can provide better service, she can participate in the test, although they only accept men. Misaki doesn't want to lose, so she disguises herself as a man with her co-worker to participate as a pair representing the maid cafe. They notice many people will apply and the manager gets intimidated by the chain's name. The vice president starts explaining the rules of the first test, a marathon where they have to carry their partner to the gym. The manager doesn't believe they can compete against someone who can do this type of test. Still, the MC makes her see reason and convinces her not to give up before the fight. Besides, it's an advantage to be able to carry her partner. Throughout the test, they see that the scoundrels and some strange people are also participating, including Yukimura with Kanu. Misaki has to disguise herself even more with glasses, so they don't recognize her. They arrive at the gym and are surprised by how big it is, but they still come across Kanu and the MC gets nervous. Meanwhile, the vice president starts explaining the reasons for the physical tests as being a butler is very tiring. They continue with the rest of the tests and the MC and her co-worker sweep them until they reach a test where they have to change their clothes in less than a minute. Misaki completes it without a problem, but her co-worker is exposed as a woman and she has no choice but to confess. Due to that, they start doubting a couple of mass participants who turn out to be Yusi and Aoi, who are disqualified because Aoi is too young. Tora thinks it would be a shame to waste those two talents, so he recommends that Yusi and the MC form a group as long as they meet the requirements. To prove that she's a man, the MC takes Yusui's hand and puts it on her chest, and thanks to being flat-chested, she passes without anyone noticing. Now she will compete alongside Yusui. The following test begins, and it consists of setting up a tea table. Misaki wants to hurry to set it up as fast as possible, but Yusui stops her to analyze the situation, and they decide to do something elegant instead. Misaki brings a lot of pastries, but Yusui thinks it's too much, so the MC starts following his instructions, since he seems to know what he's doing. They manage to set up a small but elegant table that impresses the judges. The scoundrel will start causing a commotion, so the MC goes to kick them out. Meanwhile, Yusi meets with Yukimura and Kanu, but pretends to be someone else to avoid the MC being discovered. On the other hand, she meets Tora and enters the men's bathroom to avoid him. When Yusi arrives, he asks her not to be impulsive in a very striking way, and the MC feels embarrassed and promises to control herself. They begin to explain the next test, and the MC promises to give it her all. However, when Yukimura approaches them, the MC gets so nervous that she falls off the stage and Yusi jumps to her rescue, injuring himself in the process. Yusi says everything is fine, so they can continue, but the MC notices that he hurt his arm. When it's their turn to simulate service, the MC does all the physical work while Yusui handles everything verbal. Their client is Miyabi's vice president, who questions why Yusui isn't doing anything. Yusui says he will fulfill other functions and begins to play the violin. The vice president accepts and he stays for a while to enjoy the music, taking up a lot of time. Yusui starts to look bad, so the MC can't take it anymore and stops him. The vice president asks for an explanation and the MC tells him that Yusui can no longer continue, but this is not a reason for him since Yusui didn't say anything. Misaki refutes him, saying that the shop they believe in always supports each other to provide the best service possible. An ambulance is called for Yusui, and the boss asks the MC what she would do if they had to relocate the shop. Misaki says she would follow wherever they go, and the boss is a bit more at ease. On the other hand, the vice president is thinking about the words the MC said, something he hadn't considered until now. Tora tells him that it's best to use another place to open his restaurant so he doesn't have to worry about getting the maid cafe. The next day, everyone at the maid cafe is happy because the vice president canceled the purchase offer, but Misa takes a few days off to take care of Yusui. She's surprised to see where he lives, and we find out that he lives alone. Misaki is worried about him, but he jokes that it's risky for both of them to be alone, although he's actually running a fever. Misaki makes him lie down and takes care of him by putting towels on him and feeding him. But as cooking is not one of her talents, Yusui teases her about how bad the food tastes. However, he finishes it anyway, not wanting to waste the MC's food. She tries to change his clothes, but she gets nervous because they're so close and she starts to get flustered. Eventually, she thanks him for always helping her when she needs it, and he feels the same way, causing the MC to blush. The next day, Yukimura is whining because his little sister, Ruri, won't talk to him, and to make matters worse, she arrives to walk home with him and tells her friends that he's just a boy accompanying her home, which breaks Yukimura's heart even more. It turns out that Ruri wants to be a princess, and because Yukimura doesn't seem like a prince, she doesn't want anyone to see him as her brother. Misaki and Yusui arrive, and Ruri becomes fascinated with Yusui because he looks like a real prince. She then wants to have a date with him. Yukimura begs Yusui to accept the invitation, as his sister finally showed some affection towards him upon learning that he was 
friends with her prince. Yushi ends up accepting and goes on the date dressed as a prince. Oa also shows up as he was the one who fixed Yusui up and wanted to see how his date was going. Rui asks to go see the flowers, but everyone is amazed because Yusui looks perfect, even though he's just standing there staring off into space. Rui stumbles out of the flower shop, but as a princess, she holds back her tears. Yusui sees that she takes being a princess very seriously, so he carries her in his arms and holds her hand for the rest of the walk. Yukumuro loses confidence, thinking that he couldn't be that type of brother. To make matters worse, everyone talks about how good a brother Yusui is, so the MC changes plans and looks for a way to make Yusui look bad so that Yukumura can save his sister. First, they disguise Kanu as a delinquent so that Yusui will play along and abandon Murray. But no matter how much Yusui realizes what they're planning, Kanu can't be threatening, so he runs away without saying a word. Aoka has a better idea, so he uses the MC and the scoundrels to make Yusui look bad, but everything goes wrong and they jump the gun, so the MC has to improvise by pretending to be Yusui's fiance, leaving him looking like an unfaithful prince. Ruri realizes that it's her brother's doing, so she gets mad at him and runs into the cafe she was going to. By chance, she ends up crashing into a shelf, so she's about to be crushed, but Yukimura jumps to save her and Yusi, and the MC prevent them from getting hurt. Ruri starts crying from the scare, but doesn't think it's her fault as everything was because of her brother. However, he gets serious and scolds her, so Ruri thinks about it and apologizes to the cafe owner for what she caused. The next day, Owe is in the park and some boys approach him, so Yukimura and Kanu intervene and manage to get them to leave him alone. Owe remembers that they're the weirdos that were with the MC, so he uses them as cameramen as he was filming an idle DVD. He approaches the park and gets upset because there's a fair going on in the lake, so he has to think of a new place that the scoundrels were here working. So upon hearing that Aoi was going to release a new DVD, they get excited and Aoi takes the opportunity to gather them as volunteer staff. Aoi takes her shots and the scoundrels do everything she asks without complaints, so they feel pathetic. But Aoi dresses up as a maid, so the scoundrels start making weird faces since it reminds them a lot of the MC. They finish filming and Yukumura seems very happy as he enjoys doing these kinds of things with friends, but the scoundrels start arguing as one of them yells at them for not understanding Aoi's pure style, then laughs as they fight over silly things. Yukimura suggests that Aoi is also having a lot of fun, so she enters Sundir mode and says it's not true, and that she doesn't care about everything they did in the afternoon since it's an amateur job, but a man pushes him and loses his memory so he almost falls trying to recover it. Misaki manages to save her with the just and thinks they should look for the memory since she looks very sad, but Oi refuses because she thinks they hate her because she treats them badly, but in reality, they always treat each other like that so Oi laughs and asks for their help to find the memory. A few days later, we see that a new student is going to enter the academy. Meanwhile, the MC yells at the sports clubs because their buildings are too dirty, so she forces them to clean them. They are not very happy about it since it will take them a long time, so Yukimura tells them that they could prepare a snack for everyone. Upon hearing this, everyone agrees, but this is a very difficult task since there are many people, although they are still determined to do it. Yushi returns from his recovery and sends indirect messages to the MC about the care he received, so Kanu notices and interrogates the MC. She tries to deny everything, but she gets depressed when she realizes that he noticed that she was taking care of Yusui, making the atmosphere uncomfortable. Then she sees that Yusui receives letters from admirers, so she recommends that he formalize a relationship to make that stop, but Yusui tells her that it's a nuisance, so Kanu thinks that he made it uncomfortable, although Yusui doesn't seem to care. At night, the MC can't get the rice to take the shape she wants, so her little sister gives her tips for poor but resourceful people. So the MC spends the whole night getting everything ready for the next day. The council meets to prepare the onajiri, and meanwhile, Yukimura begins to talk to Kanu about how incredible Yusui and the MC are. So Kanu realizes that he likes the MC and Yukimura doesn't deny it, although he realizes too late and nervously says that it's not in a romantic way. Meanwhile, Yusu realizes that the new student is boofing around in the chaos of cleaning, but the clubs can't take it anymore, so they see that the food is ready, and they all get in and devour everything. Although the balls that the MC had prepared were thrown out the window, Misaki goes into sage mode and chases them for causing a commotion, but one of the rice balls falls on the new student's head, and instead of getting angry, he eats it. Misaki realizes that they cleaned everything, so she feels relieved, but when she tries her onajiri, she realizes why they were thrown out and Yusi sees her sleeping, so he takes the opportunity to eat her on a jury, even though he was surprised by how bad they taste. The next day, the MC sees Hinata Shintani, the new student, fall from the sky. He is a bit strange since he can smell food from far away, so the MC scolds him for trying to eat in class, and Hinata starts crying, making her look like the bad guy. They give him a tour of the school, and Hinata doesn't stop eating, so the MC confiscates his food again, and when she sees him crying, she feels uncomfortable since he seems like a child. Later, Sakura tells the MC that Hinata seems to be in trouble since some boy had surrounded him, so she runs to help him, but in reality, they had become his friends since they were amazed by his great sense of smell. However, after Hinata tells his sad story, everyone becomes sad and surprised that he can still smile with that past. Hinata doesn't seem too sad since he returned to reunite with his first love, who has the same name as the MC, so she remembers that as a child, a chubby boy got hurt while helping her, and they promise to be together forever, making Sakura emotional since it's very telenovela-like. Hinata starts looking for her, causing a commotion, so the MC tries to calm him down with 
frets, but he loses his balance and as he falls, he realizes that the MC is his first love. He jumps to hug her and everybody is shocked. A few days later, the class is very happy because they are going on a field trip and her superiors had talked wonders about this trip, so they couldn't wait. However, they are in for a bitter surprise as they only end up working in the temple, and the MC explains that the elders are having such a hard time that they deceive the younger ones to take it out on them. Anyway, Hinata thinks that she's at a birthday party, so the MC gets annoyed and takes a firm hand to prevent them from doing whatever they want, but Yusui calls her attention, and the MC blushes as Yusui seems upset by her suitor. Later, the girls are separated to cook, and the men are sent to meditate, so Hinata sees Yusui up close and is surprised at how great he is, but Yukimura separates them because, in his experience, Yusubi is not afraid of success. Dinner time arrives and the food they serve is quite little, so Hinata finishes quickly and asks for more, but the monk tells her that there is no more and punishes Hinata since she is very annoying and doesn't stop complaining. Misaki worries about what Hinata might do while alone and realizes that he has gone into the storeroom, so she enters and hits him for doing whatever he wants. But to their misfortune, a monk closes the door and they are locked in, so Hinata gets nervous because a man and a woman in that situation are very manga. Hinata asks her not to be afraid and to keep looking at him, but after a while, he gets nervous, so he asks her not to look at him, and the MC laughs because he can't decide, and Yusui arrives to mark his territory before something else happens. The last day of the camp arrives, and the girls are scared because it is rumored that now the work will be for them. Yusui and Hinata don't stop fighting, so the MC kicks them out and leaves them alone to reflect on what they have been doing. After a while, everyone goes to some cabins on the outskirts in the pouring rain, and upon arriving, the girls are watched by the men, so they flee to a separate cabin, and it turns out that this has happened before, so the hard work they were going to have is to survive the men's stalking, who after so many days have lost control. Normally, the teachers set up a barricade to protect the women, but the rain washed away this barricade, so they are defenseless. Meanwhile, the men are starving, and as they had said, the first thing that comes to mind when thinking about what to do is to go and look for the women, so the MC runs to see how she can solve the problem since she cannot just stand there doing nothing. On the way, she meets the boys and is surprised that Hinata is with them since he only wanted to see the MC, but she knows that the others don't have such good intentions so a fight breaks out between all the men and the MC. Hinata realizes they are being surrounded and tries to help, but since there are only two of them, they are ignored, and the men head directly towards the women. However, Yusui is paying attention and tells everyone to play tag and that he will chase them along with the MC and Hinata. All the men run away scared as Yusui wouldn't be very kind to them. Hinata is surprised that everything was solved just by his presence, but the MC isn't as surprised since everyone knows she's very strong. Later, the MC goes with the girls who are worried, but now it's time for the barbecue, so they have to get ready. Yusui goes with the MC and asks her what Hinata is to her as he always seems to be attentive to him. Misaki tells him that Hinata is a childhood friend and a troublesome boy, but that he's actually the most troublesome one. Yusui is reassured, but after so much effort, he can't move anymore and ends up lying on top of the MC. Days later at the MC's workplace, her colleague named Erika accidentally agrees to go on a date with a client if she wins the contest to see who can eat the most cakes. Misaki decides to help Erika win by competing in the contest herself while disguised. She is surprised to see Hinata at the event, but what surprised is her even more is that Yusui is the one who prepares the cakes, causing him to realize that something is going on. The competition begins and those who leave a cake unfinished perceive a punishment, so everyone tries their best. However, Yusui increases the size of the cakes, causing Erika's suitor to faint and the MC to barely win. The boss begins to explain the prizes and one of them is a photo with a maid of the winner's choice. Hinata chooses the MC without knowing it is her, only by her name. She accepts the challenge to avoid her secret being revealed, but Yusui does not plan to give her an advantage, so Hinata wins without much effort. Misaki leaves and Hinata seems to recognize her but cannot catch up to her, leaving him with doubts. She lies down in a park where Yusui finds her. Misaki agrees to rest her head on his lap to prevent him from doing anything strange, but he still bothers her. She gets annoyed but then realizes that Yusui knows everything, making her blush. Days later, the MC is traumatized by sweets, but to prevent Hinata from discovering that she works at the maid cafe, she agrees to go out with him using the coupon she won. She had a plan that she had devised with the boss and her colleagues to disguise herself and hide her identity, but Hinata is upset because Yusui joined them as it was supposed to be a date. Yusui found out and tagged along, so the MC did not intervene. However, they start to argue, and the MC scolds them, which only makes Hanada more infatuated with her. It reminds him of how she used to scold him as a child, although it also reminds the MC that she did not have the best impression of Hanada as a child. He says he has changed. They discuss their jobs, and Hanada wants to see where the MC works, so she has to go to the bathroom since she cannot lie to him directly. Yusui realizes this, and Hanada remembers that when she was a child, she was more cheerful. When her parents died, she tried to hide her feelings, but he made her realize that being honest and able to cry was important. That's why he holds her in such high regard. Yusui takes it as a declaration of war, and the MC is hesitant to lie to Hinata, but she decides to do it after seeing how good he is when he helps a child without expecting anything in return. Hinata is surprised to learn that she is a maid and starts to make a scene. 
scene. Yusi separates them and takes the MC away for causing a disturbance during work hours. Misaki thanks Yusi for helping her, but Hinata shows up again to continue complimenting her as a maid. Yusi separates them again but gives Hinata a final warning not to touch her again, although the MC does not realize that there is a rivalry between the two suitors. The next day, Hinata goes to see the MC, but to what happened, Yusu doesn't leave her side, and the MC gets upset and kicks them both out. On her way out, Hinata's friends start talking about part-time jobs, and the MC starts to sweep cold, but Hinata promises to keep the secret. At the MC's job, they accept it to work on a magical girl chapter, so the MC has to watch the series to understand the role she has to play. Meanwhile, Hinata leaves work and looks for a special place he had as a child, but he runs into the MC's mother. Meanwhile, the MC is watching the magical girl DVDs, and her mother arrives with Hinata as they have known each other since childhood and get along well with the MC's little sister. They invite him to dinner and reveal that they already knew that he likes the MC, so Hinata gets very nervous and clarifies that he was looking for the tree he fell from as a child because it was where he made the promise with the MC. Days later, a magical maid event begins at the cafe, and the employees dress up in cosplay. Always surprised that the MC knows so much about magical girls since she didn't know anything until recently. However, unfortunately for her, Yusui arrives as a customer and he is more serious than usual, making it clear that he is worried about Hinata. Yusui tries the cakes and finds them delicious but notes several recommendations. At that moment, Hinata also appears and wants to take advantage of the event. Misaki receives him with a spell and wants to know what kind of spell he would like, so he takes the opportunity to ask for one to defeat his rivals, but the boss tells him he should do that himself. Yusui agrees and leaves, making the MC very nervous, so Hinata takes the opportunity to ask her to find the tree where they made their childhood promise. At night, always upset because she was not allowed to dress up as a magical girl, so she takes it out on the MC, asking about Yusui since they seem more than friends. She then wants to know what Yusui means to her. Misaki can't answer, so she goes out to take out the trash and Yusui is there because he wanted to see her. He overhears the conversation and asks her to answer the last question. Misaki reacts violently to avoid answering since she can't be honest about her feelings. Since the MC can't be honest with her feelings, Yusui shows her his own and casts a spell on her so that she can't lie. Misaki turns red and is speechless. Meanwhile, Hinata realized how the MC reacted to Yusui. He thinks it has nothing to do with her liking him and finds the tree he was looking for, thinking it's fate. The next day, Hinata wakes up after dreaming about the MC and at school, his friends are surprised that he isn't afraid of her, as they see her as a demon they fear, but for him, she is a super kind person who is concerned about them. Hinata is happy because from what they say, she may treat him differently, but he is the only one in love as he still sees her as the same girl he fell in love with. Hinata remembers when he moved in with his grandfather who always scolded him, and at his new school he was quite popular as he became the star of the baseball club, but all the gifts didn't matter to him as he only wanted the MC. Back with the MC, she finds out that Kuga got hurt and is returning to the stage, so she invites Sakura to his next performance and she accepts, believing he has changed, but Shizuko and the MC judge her with their eyes as they don't think it's true. Yusui appears and says he will also go, so the MC tries to avoid him, but upon seeing his sad face, she blushes and ultimately agrees under the pressure of her friends. At work, they have an event where they predict your future, so when Hinata arrives, he goes to see his future with the MC, and Erika tells him it's like a deflated balloon, so he gets depressed. But he doesn't lose his optimism, so Erika tells him that maybe that way he can achieve what he wants, and this makes him very happy. Upon hearing this, Yusu also gets encouraged to listen to his prediction, and Erika tells him she doesn't see a good future, as they are incompatible. So if he still wants to go out with her, he will have to endure many things. This depresses Yusui, and when he leaves, he acts dramatically, and the MC feels uncomfortable as it's just a false prediction, although she lets slip a cheesy phrase, making her blush. Unfortunately, Hinata hears this last part. The next day, Hinata is still sad about what he heard yesterday, but he still helps the MC as he sees her cleaning a Alone. He has the magnificent idea of using the hose, but he didn't place it properly and they end up soaked and they have to change clothes. Yusui notices that her underwear is visible, so he gives her his shirt so that nobody peeks and marks his territory with a bark. Hinata can't help but cry and responds with another bark, but he remembers that when he was in middle school, his friends told him that if a girl is pretty, she probably already has a boyfriend, as girls in the capital think about their stuff. So Hinata gets traumatized hearing all the things she could be doing, but he denies it as he doesn't think it's possible. One of his friends stops them from teasing him as he still idealizes is his first love, as he even kept one of her gifts all these years. But he asks him to be prepared to see anything and not get hurt when he searches for her, although he couldn't avoid the latter. However, he won't stop fighting, at least until he becomes a nuisance. The next day, MC attends the festival where Kuga will perform, and we see Sakura run to greet him and get pushed by a fan. So Kuga jumps to help her and calm his fans to respect each other, but Sakura and Shizuko are dragged to the front, separating them from the MC, who is left alone with Yusui. Misaki recognizes that he seems different, although she still can't trust him with Sakura. Although Yusui 
Yusi tells her they should enjoy the festival since there's nothing she can do right now. Misaki and Yusi started walking between the festival stands. Soon, they found themselves in the middle of a huge crowd. The pair got safely away, but Yusi now has a bunch of food from the girls he ran into. Misaki says she can't believe it, and Yusi tells her to enjoy the food and gives her a bite from his own skewer. To get Yusi to stop teasing her, the MC got up and went for a walk. They stumbled upon an attraction that was a challenge for couples. Yusi wanted to go in to confirm Erika's prediction about them being a couple, but Misaki was too embarrassed to do it, so Yusi started to tease her again, saying she should smile. They held hands and went in, but since they only had 10 minutes to complete all the challenges, they hurried through them. The first challenge was about eating Raymond. Misa Chan realized that eating with her non-dominant hand was very uncomfortable, so Yusi took advantage and fed her. She didn't like it, so she acted aggressively, and they drew a lot of tension since everyone could see how quickly they were completing the challenges, to the point of finishing them in record time. They were given a special pass for the evening celebration, and in the meantime, Shizuko couldn't take it anymore since they had to wait a lot for Kuga to start his presentation, and she didn't understand why she would do so much for someone like him. Sakura explained that she admired him a lot since he pursued his dreams, and that's why she was in love with him. Husui told the MC that he had a lot of fun, and even though she tried to deny it, she also had fun, so she was embarrassed after letting go of his hand. The concert began, and the MC walked away from Yusui, so he told her he could hold her hand again, but she got upset and refused. After the concert, the MC met Kuga, who was going for a walk with Sakura, and she wanted to check if he had really changed, so she judged him with her gaze. He got scared and explained that she always treated him like a person and also told her that she should stop being so toxic with her friend and that she should go for a walk with her boyfriend. But when she found out they weren't in a couple, she was surprised since he would have left her if he had to put up with her indifference all this time. Misaki thought about it and proposed to Yusi to stay until late night. He agreed since they had won their special pass. This entrance also enabled them to be disguised so they could have a better experience at the festival. Instead though, they went to a room to see everything from above. Misaki asks Yusui if he really had to put up with her. He replies that he did, but before he could explain why, he asked her the same question. The MC answers that she had been confused all this time, although she always wanted to hold his hand. Then Yusui hugs her and starts telling her what an incredible person and woman she is, and that he madly loves her. He even kisses her. Our Misaki-chan, being the sundier she will always be, looks happy and tells him that she hates him in a soft voice. What an ending.